Hi, this is Kevin with Cadence, and in this video I'd like to show you how to customize the default WooCommerce email templates using the Cadence WooCommerce Email Designer plugin. Now firstly, if you haven't already, you're going to want to navigate to this URL, click that download button, and install the plugin to your site, or you can just navigate to plugins, add new, do a search for WooCommerce email or something like that, and install and activate the plugin through there. So once the plugin is activated and installed, you should see this area under WooCommerce, WooCommerce Email Customizer. Click that to get started customizing your email templates. When you first open the Email Customizer, the first thing you should see is this default WooCommerce email template. Now, you can start customizing from this if you prefer, but we've also included some pre-built templates. So if you like the look of any of these better, just click on the design you want, click Load Template, hit OK, and then the customizer will load this template in the background for you. Depending on your site configuration, this step could take a moment, so just be patient. And now that our email template is loaded, let's get started customizing. So the first section we have here is the email type and text, and our first setting is the preview order. The preview order just allows you to set what content is going to show here. So if you prefer to see your own products and customer information, you can select any order that's been placed on your site, and it will just be loaded here instead. Next we have the email type. This just allows you to select what type of email you're currently customizing. So if you select a different type, it'll automatically load the fields for that, and you can customize for that email. So the first thing we have for this email type is the recipient section. This just allows you to set who is going to receive this certain email. Next we have the subject text, which is just the subject line that will appear in your email client when the email is received. We also have this heading text setting, so you can customize that to whatever you want in real time. Same with the subtitle text and body text. Now you can select any one of these emails and do the same thing, but once you're done customizing them, I suggest you save. It's always a good idea. Moving on, we've got the container settings. So we can set a container background color, which is just around the content of your email. You can set the content width, if we want to stretch that out a bit. You can set a border radius if we want to round the corners of our content off, a border width, a border color, and if you want, a shadow around your content. But be aware that this doesn't work for every email client yet. We can set container top padding, and we can set container bottom padding. Just got to scroll down to see that. Moving on, let's select our header settings. Up here you can see we've got this header placeholder image, but let's change it to our site logo. Just the Ascend logo here, and it'll refresh to show that new image there. You can set the image alignment, you can set the max width, which will change the size of the image. You can set the background color, so let's darken that a bit. And then we can set the padding top and bottom for our image. Moving on, we've got the header style. So we can set a background color for the header area. We can set the text alignment in our header, the padding top, padding bottom for our header, and the padding left and right to move that text left and right. Next we've got the heading. So we can set the heading font size, the heading line height, the heading font family, the font style, the font weight, and the text color. We'll just leave that black. I like the way that looks. We can change the placement of this subtitle. So if you want it to show below the heading, just select that setting. Then we also have the subtitle font settings. So you can go through and adjust those as you need. The subject, subtitle line height, font family, font style, font weight, and finally text color. So that does it for the header settings. Let's move on to the content itself. So first we have the content container area, so you can set a background for that content area if you like. We'll just leave it white, I think that looks better. Adjust the padding top, and we can adjust our padding bottom, just reduce that, and we can adjust padding left and right to pull that content in or out. Next we have our contents heading style, so that will define our H2 and H3 elements in the email content. So we can increase that font size, I'll decrease the line height a bit, decrease the padding a bit, 
add a little bit of bottom padding, decrease the margin top, decrease the margin bottom. You can also adjust the font family, font style, font weight, and we can do a text transform. So let's change that to uppercase. Font color, we'll just leave that black. We can set our text alignment, we'll move it left. And we can change the separator if we want. We'll leave the separator above, increase the separator height, change the separator style, and adjust that separator color a little bit. Next we have our H3 font settings, so that's going to define this text here. Set the font size, the line height, the font family. You can set the font style, we'll switch that to normal. Set our font weight, let's give it a little more font weight. And then we can set the color. I'm going to just change that black to fit everything else. And next we've got our content text style. So this will set the text font size for your content, the line height for your content, font family, font weight, and link color. So if you've got a link right here, we can change that to whatever we want. And then finally, we've got the text color. I'm just going to make that black. That does it for the content text style. Moving on, we've got our order items setting. So you can change this uh, table style, normal if you want to have it fully boxed. I like the light better. And we can add our product images if we'd like those to show in the email. We can set a background color for this table area. Just leave it white. Set the padding for our products. You can set a border width for that border, a border color. Set the style of that border. And finally, we can set that table heading style. Now, be aware you might have to go back and adjust your font settings. Looks like it works for this email, but just be aware of that. So I'm going to switch it back to split. Moving on, we've got our addresses section. So this is going to be this area here. We can change our address box background color. Change the border width, the border color, border style, and the text color. Let's just make that darker. And then finally, we can set the alignment. I'll left align that text. And that does it for the addresses section. Let's move on to customize our footer. Go to the footer style section. And let's move that inside the body container. I like that look better for these purposes. Um, we can change the background color. I'll just leave that background color. Just the top padding. Just the bottom padding. Which you might have to scroll down to see. And we can adjust the left and right padding if we want to pull those icons in. Next we've got footer social settings, so this will just allow you to set where these icons link to. And you can also give it a title, so let's add Facebook title for that icon, and be sure to update these links in here with your relevant URLs. Next we've got the footer title color for those social links. Let's just make it white, change the font if we want to, set that font weight, let's reduce that, let's reduce that font size too. And we'll reduce some of that top padding. Get rid of some of the bottom padding as well. I'm just going to leave the border the way it is and change it to a different style. We'll do the double for that one as well. And moving on, we've got the footer credit area. So this is just going to allow you to customize the text down here. Set the alignment of that left to match everything else. Increase that font size a little bit. Take the font weight down. I'll leave the default font. Change the text color if you wish. Get rid of that top padding if you want to pull it closer to the icons. Add a little bottom padding if you want to move it up. And then you can change the copyright text, whatever you want there. Next, let's move on to the custom styles. Custom styles will allow more advanced users to write custom CSS for their emails. I won't cover that here because it's quite specific, but anyone who knows what they're doing can just add CSS right there. 
Next we've got the import and export area and I'm just going to save again because it's always a good idea to do that. Now once you're happy with the email and you want to use it on a different site, you can click this export button and that will generate this file for you. So navigate next to the site that you want to use this template on and under the import section just upload this file right there. Hit import and it'll load all the settings from the previous site's email. And finally we've got this preview email setting. So set the email address that you want to receive this. And then it's going to ask that you save before you send the email. Hit the send email button and this dialog box pops up. Hit OK and the email should be sent. Now that basically covers what the plugin is capable of. If you have any questions about the plugin or need any help at all, I'll include a link to the support forms in the description of the video. Thanks for watching.